was the forgotten skater, a has-been, who never quite made it to the top. But Rudy Galindo persevered, even as public humiliation and private tragedy threatened to break him. Here's Sylvia Chase with a story of courage on ice. Rudy Galindo has skated all his life, but only this year learned how to be a champion. So when this kid from the wrong side of the tracks, who had never come close to winning a national title, stepped out onto the ice at this year's competition, the experts barely looked up. This guy was gone. History. Sports writer Christine Brennan. I mean, he is so far gone from this sport when he shows up in San Jose in 19, January 1996, that uh, his picture's not in the press guide. But when he started to skate, even U.S. Figure Skating Association president, Maury Stilwell, had to pay attention. I mean, probably 30 seconds into his program, you, you said, what is happening? By the time you reach the halfway part, uh, that's when we were all on our feet. Well, I knew I was skating really well, and I was like, yes, I'm finally going to make the world team. Rudy's sister, Laura, was watching. And all I kept thinking is, come on, baby, just hold on to that one double axle. It's easy for you. Just do it. <laughs> oh, oh, very nice. Very nice. I was like going into my last spin thinking, OK, third spot, second spot. I was leaning up against our choreographer, John, and he kept telling me, breathe, Laura, breathe. <laughs> Never in my life I thought they would put me as the national champion. And then when the crowd was chanting six, six, I was like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm going to get a 6.0. He had won the national title. And in the once blue blood sport of figure skating, Galindo is very much a 90s kind of champ. A gay Mexican-American who grew up in a trailer park, about as far from the figure skating mainstream as it gets. Tanya Harding, for example, is always seen as the trailer park, you know, trash lifestyle. Well, Tanya Harding is, uh, is upper middle class compared to Rudy Galindo. I mean, Tanya had money coming in, she had sponsors, Rudy had nothing. Nothing except early grace on the ice and a hardworking father who wanted his children to have better lives. He drove long haul trucks to pay for skating lessons. As Rudy moved up the competitive ladder, big sister Laura joined the Ice Follies and helped out. Just a hundred dollars a week or something I made. And then I would just give it to dad and for Rudy skating. Rudy never asked, my dad never asked something I wanted to do. Not everybody does that, though, Laura. They should, though. <laughs> Rudy would do the same for me. It paid for a good coach, Jim Hewlett, who became friend and mentor to Rudy, pairing him with the 11-year-old Christy Yamaguchi. They would skate together for seven years, winning two national titles. He was just absolutely the most consistent skater that I had ever seen. Each time I turned around, I knew exactly where his hand was going to be or exactly how many um, strokes to take while we're skating and, and not even worrying about whether he was going to land a jump or not because I knew he would. Rudy and Christy were like sister and brother. By 1989, thought to be on their way to the Olympics. Then in December, Coach Hewlett died of AIDS. Four months later, Christy dropped Rudy. Yamaguchi, a promising single skater, decided her future prospects would be brighter alone. I saw his whole life just crumble inside when they told him. It was very devastating for him. I remember when we split up and I came home and told my dad. He just sat there and I told him the whole story, what went on, and a tear just rolled down his eyes and it just broke my heart. Sorry. Is it sad to remember? It was 1990. Rudy had to learn solo all over again after years of glorious pairs competition. The results were humiliating. 
1991 Nationals, 11th. 1992, 8th. 1993, 5th. 1994, 7th. I always cringe thinking that, oh, I can't face all of my friends and family because they're gonna be so disappointed in me. I was afraid to face people because they had so much faith in me. I thought that faith is gonna be broken. And there was personal tragedy. His father died in 1993. A year later, his only brother died of AIDS. How did you continue to skate through that? Skating was a secret place I could go to and forget about all my problems. Galindo soldiered on, perfecting a fluid style that for years judges found not masculine enough for men's skating. You were saying to yourself, I know the judges <laughs> want these kind of macho skate back and forth jump. Yeah, and land hard and right. go on from there. I think that's boring. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoy the light part of the style and the, the ballet part of it. I mean, that's why I'm in skating. I like the creativity. And the quality that I like about his skating, he seems to float on top of the ice. He's not a heavy skater at all. He's very light. Brian Boitano and Dick Button were talking about style, I think, when they said how light you were. Mm -hmm. Now, we both know that this is also a term that's used about gay people, how light they are. But I don't think... I think they're talking about my landing. <laughs> Rudy jokes about it, but the fact is he is the first U.S. male competitor to come out of the closet. Word is it's hurt him with the judges, even when he skated well. Do you feel that your sexual preference was in the back of their minds? When oh, definitely. I always thought that there was some discrimination. They don't want him to be the openly gay skater on the ice. It's okay if you're gay, but don't show it. Don't hit us over the head with it, especially on national television. By 1995, the sport didn't have to worry because Rudy had all but disappeared from figure skating. His second coach died of AIDS that year and disillusioned. He stopped training for months after finishing eighth at that year's nationals. But with the 96 Nationals scheduled at San Jose Arena, right down the road from the rink where he and Laura were now teaching young skaters, he pondered one more try. And dance. Up, up. Good boy, come on, come on. <gasps> he needed a coach. I go, why don't you go to a top coach? I don't care what it costs me, I'll pay for it. And he goes, no, I want you. I want you to stand there by the boards. I go, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, I'm positive. I go, okay. This is a scary spin. Sometimes so the homegrown Galindos prepared for the Nationals. And for the first time, Rudy seemed more happy than anxious. He was even able to joke about the fact that he couldn't afford new skates. Poor boy with poor boots. <laughs> it was those old skates that delivered a near-perfect performance in the short program at the 96 Nationals. Now that's the hardest move that's been done here. Yet even then, the judges wouldn't cut him a break, marking him third, even behind a competitor who touched his hand on the ice. Is the crowd not so excited about those marks, though? 5.4 up to 5.8. I have to say, 5.4 sounds a little low to me. Yeah. The perception is out there, Mr. Stillwell, that the judges didn't want Rudy Galindo to win the Nationals and that he's a better skater than he's been given credit for, but something has held him down. I believe that statement is totally untrue. I have judged Rudy. I have judged Rudy when he's been fifth. I have judged Rudy when he has been ninth. I have never had a bad conscience about the placement of Rudy. Is it fair or right? No. Should Rudy have been in first place after the short program? Yes. But welcome to figure skating. And probably the toughest place to skate last in your hometown when everybody else is mm -hmm. done and you still have your whole program ahead of you. The long program. Rudy, the final skater. His two main competitors had faltered. If he skated perfectly, the long-sought title might be Galindo's. The opening this combination. But he did more than that. Oh, hey! oh yeah. that's the best, that's the best movement in this men's yeah. competition. That day, Galindo skated from the wrong side of the tracks, right smack into the heart of the skating world. Even doubters joined the ranks of the converted. It was such an inspiring performance to us who were on the inside that we couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just uh, 
These things don't happen very often. Uh, it gets me even now. <laughs> Champion at last, and he had not done it alone. There is no one in their seats at this point, including me. And many have tears in their eyes. I'm always speaking to my dad and everyone that's passed away, you know, give me the strength to do well. I had a feeling that they were behind my skating that night, like they were the wind beneath my wings. Just this afternoon, Rudy Galindo skated in the World Championships in Edmonton. He is currently in fourth place, within striking distance of the world title. The competition concludes tomorrow. ABC Sports will bring you that event live tomorrow evening at 8 Eastern, 7 Central Time.